learning outcomes. After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about the principle of western blotting technique and its methodology, different buffers and reagents used for this protocol, immunodetection procedure and the various applications of western blotting. Introduction Western blotting or immunoblotting along with northern and southern blotting represent core techniques in cell and molecular biology. The technique is used in basic research to separate and identify proteins from a crude mixture of proteins extracted from cells. Proteins are isolated from the source and the crude mixture of proteins is determined based on molecular weight by using STS page. This step is followed by the transfer of proteins to a membrane producing a band for each protein. The membrane is incubated with a blocking reagent to mask the non-specific binding and then further with primary antibodies specific to the desired protein. It is first followed by incubation with a secondary antibody directed against the primary antibody. The secondary antibody bound to the desired protein can be identified using a chromogenic compound or chemiluminescence. Since these antibodies only bind to the protein of interest, only a single band is visible. The thickness of the band corresponds to the amount of protein present and hence can help in the interpretation of results quantitatively using a reference standard. Antibody deliberations one of the most important features of an efficacious western blot is the highly specific interaction between an antibody and an antigen. The antigen generally is a protein or a peptide and is the objective of the antibody. The antibodies that are to be used for immunodetection should be first checked if they are suitable for western blot or not, with consideration given to the experimental conditions mentioned by the antibody supplier. Generally, western blot positive antibodies identify a short linear sequence of amino acids present inside the protein that stays integral or becomes visible when the target protein is entirely unraveled. Since most western blots are carried out under denaturing and reducing states which eliminate all developed protein structure. In contrast, some epitopes can be conformational making a three-dimensional operational configuration of amino acids that will be absent in the denaturation of the protein. Therefore, not all antibodies follow a typical western blot. Subsequently, western blot process permit a flexibility in considering gel electrophoresis and blotting circumstances. It is possible to modify buffers to retain enough higher order protein structure for detection by some antibodies. The antibody data sheet will indicate which buffer conditions are best suited to the particular antigen antibody interaction. Monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies. The antibodies used to detect the target protein in a western blot will be either monoclonal or polyclonal. Both types of antibodies are typically created when an antigen such as protein or a peptide 
injected into an animal and its immune system produces antibodies specific to that antigen. Polyclonal antibodies comprise of a mixed pool of immunoglobulin molecules that join to numerous dissimilar epitopes originating on a single antigen. Polyclonal antibodies are usually produced in rabbits, donkeys, sheep and goats and are purified from their serum. In disparity, monoclonal antibodies join to a single epitope inside a target antigen. They are composed of homogeneous cloned immunoglobulin molecules rather than the heterogeneous antibody mixture typical of polyclonal antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies are made by fusing antibody producing cells from the spleen of an immunized animal, usually a rat or a mouse, with an immortalized cell line to yield single specificity antibodies that can be refined from tissue culture supernatant. Both monoclonal antibodies and polyclonal antibodies are used in western blotting and offer various advantages and disadvantages. Solutions and reagents used for western blotting. Lysis buffer. The following buffers can be stored at 4 degrees Celsius for several weeks or can be kept in alicots and stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius up to a year. They are NP40 lysis buffer which includes 150 millimolar NaCl, 1% NP40 which can be substituted with 0.1% Triton X100. 50 millimolar Tris HCl at pH 8 and protease inhibitors. The RIPA buffer which includes 150 millimolar NaCl, 1% NP40 or 0.1% Triton X100, 0.5% sodium deoxycholate, 0.1% SDS. 50 millimolar Tris HCl at pH 8 and protease inhibitors. Tris HCl which contains 20 millimolar Tris HCl and protease inhibitors. Running transfer and blocking buffer. The Lamley 2x buffer or sample loading buffer at pH 6.8 contains 4% SDS, 10% 2-mercaptoethanol, 20% glycerol, 0.004% bromophenol blue, 0.125 molar Tris HCl, running buffer or Tris glycine oblique SDS at pH 8.3 contains 0.1% SDS, 25 millimolar Tris base, 190 millimolar glycine. Transfer buffer at pH 8.3 wet contains 25 millimolar Tris base, 190 millimolar glycine and 20% ethanol. For proteins larger than 80 kDa, SDS can be included at a final concentration of 0.1 percent. Transfer buffer semi-dry contains 48 millimolar Tris base, 39 millimolar glycine, 20 percent methanol and 0.04 percent SDS. Blocking buffer contains 3 to 5 percent milk or BSA that is bovine serum albumin. Add this to TBST 
or PBST buffer and mix gently over the rocker. Do not mix BSA by shaking. Failure in proper mixing can lead to spotting where tiny dark grains will contaminate the blot during the development under chemiluminescence. Methodology Most commonly used samples for western blotting are cell lysates or tissue extracts. Protein extraction from the samples is a preliminary step which is directed towards collection of all proteins in the cell. To avoid denaturation of proteins, this step should be performed at a cold temperature in presence of protease inhibitors. The general recommendations for cell lysis volume, according to type of cell, the amount of material and volume of lysis buffer will vary. For tissue culture cells, the amount of material should be 10 raised to power 7 cells or 100 millimeter dish. Volume of lysis buffer should be 1 ml. For whole tissue, the amount of material should be 100 milligrams, while volume of lysis buffer should be 2 ml and sonication or homogenization. For bacteria, the amount of material should be spin sample estimate volume, while the volume should be 10 volumes and vortexing. For yeast, the material should be spin sample estimate volume, while the volume of lysis buffer should be 10 volumes followed by sonication or vortexing with glass beads. Following extraction of proteins from sample, protein concentration is estimated by Lowry's or Bradford spectrophotometric method. This step is important to ensure equal loading of proteins in multiple wells. Equal amount of protein are then solubilized in appropriate buffer sample and is denatured and subjected to STS page that is sodium dodecyl sulfate page using a tracking dye that is bromophenol blue. Western blotting may yield non-specific results, so it is very important to have positive and negative controls for the sample. For a positive control, a known source of target protein such as purified protein or a control lysate is used. This helps to confirm the identity of the protein and the activity of the antibody. A negative control is a null sample which does not express the protein of interest and is used to confirm that the staining is not non-specific. The polyacrylamide gel percentage separation ranges according to protein size and the corresponding gel percentage. For proteins of 4 to 40 kDa, gel percentage should be 20 percent. For protein sizes 12 to 45 kDa, gel percentage should be 15 percent. For protein sizes 10 to 70 kDa, gel percentage should be 12.5 percent. For protein sizes 15 to 100 kDa, gel percentage should be 10 percent, while for protein sizes of 25 to 100 kDa, gel percentage should be 8 percent. The percentage and thickness of the gel will impact the transfer of proteins out of the gel in the blotting phase. So, using a thinner gel or a lower percentage of acrylamide may improve transfer results. Once the gel sets, it is placed into the running apparatus. Small volumes of protein 
that is 50 to 20 microliters mixed with the gel loading buffer are added to each individual well along with a molecular marker. The gel is then connected to a power supply and allowed to run for a few hours in a buffer tank to separate the proteins. If the gel is run at a very high voltage, it will overheat and distort the bands. Following the electrophoretic separation of the protein mixture, it is transferred to a membrane under the influence of an electric field applied perpendicular superficially on the gel resulting in the proteins to migrate from the gel onto the membrane. The membrane is placed between the gel surface and the positive electrode in a sandwich of fiber pad at each end and filter papers to protect the gel and the blotting membrane. It must be ensured that there is no air bubble between the membrane and the gel otherwise it will disrupt the electric field and hence transfer of proteins will not occur in such locations. In addition, the membrane should be positioned in such an order that the negatively charged proteins will travel from the gel to the membrane. This type of electrophoretic transfer can be performed in semi-dry or wet conditions. Wet transfer is usually preferred for large molecular weight proteins. The membrane which acts as the solid support is an essential part of this process. There are two types of membranes, nitrocellulose and PVDF. Nitrocellulose is applied for its high affinity for protein and retention facilities, but it is fragile in nature which in this limits the use of membrane for multiple experiments. On the other hand, PVDF membranes provide better mechanical support and allow the blot to be reprobed and stored. After the transfer is completed, membranes can be checked for presence of proteins by staining with Ponchu S stain. Once the presence of proteins is confirmed, the membrane is subjected to blocking that prevents antibodies from binding to the membrane non-specifically. Blocking step is performed with 5% BSA or non-fat dried milk diluted in TBST buffer to reduce the non-specific binding and minimize background. Immunodetection After the blotting process, the target protein will be identified and applying properly matched and labeled antibodies. The typical immunodetection stage comprises a few basic stages. Blocking. The blot containing the transferred protein bands is incubated with a protein or detergent solution which covers the entire surface so that antibodies do not bind non-specifically to the membrane. Antibody incubation. Labeled antibody binds to the target protein band present on the blot. Detection with substrate. The label attached to the antibody, usually an enzyme such as HRP or horse radish peroxidase is detected using a substrate which produces a visible signal corresponding to the position of the target protein. Incubation with primary antibody is done along with a generic protein such as BSA which allows the primary antibody to be reused. Moreover, 
primary antibody is needed in higher amounts than the secondary antibody. It is also important to use appropriate dilution for the primary antibody. Too high or low concentrations can interfere with the results. This incubation with primary antibody, the membrane is washed with a wash buffer such as PBST or TBST. Washing minimizes background and removes unbound antibody. However, a longer duration of wash can also reduce the intensity of the signal. After washing with TBST or PBST, the membrane is then detected using the labeled antibody, usually with an enzyme such as horseradish peroxidase or HRP. Since secondary antibody is directed against the primary antibody, it leads to signal amplification. Following incubation with secondary antibody, the membrane is again washed thoroughly to minimize non-specific binding. Now that the target protein has been specifically tagged with an appropriately labeled antibody and excess antibody has been washed away, the label will be used to identify the location of the target protein on the blot. Some labels can be detected immediately without any further processing. Fluorescent tags are used to observe and record the fluorescent signal. In the final step, signal is detected by using enhanced chemiluminescence or chromogenic substrate which give rise to a band in X-ray film at positions corresponding to the position of the target protein. The X-ray film is usually developed in a dark room. In the signal detection, the membrane can be stored at low temperature for reuse in a span of a few days. Applications of Western blotting. Western blotting is primarily used in the basic research for detection of a protein in a given sample. It is also used in diagnostic procedures for various diseases. Western blotting is also used to confirm the identity of the recombinant protein produced after gene cloning and its expression. Modifications in western blotting are used to study the protein-protein interactions within a given tissue or a cell or an organism. To summarize what we have learned till now, western blotting or immunoblotting along with northern and southern blotting represent core techniques in cell and molecular biology. The technique is used in basic research to separate and identify proteins from a crude mixture of proteins extracted from cells or tissues. Most commonly used samples for western blotting are cell lysates or tissue extracts. Protein extraction from samples is a preliminary step which is directed towards collection of all proteins in the cell. To avoid denaturation of proteins, this step should be performed at a cold temperature in the presence of protease inhibitors. Western blotting may yield non-specific results, so it is very important to have positive and negative controls for the sample. The membrane is then detected using the labeled antibody, usually with an enzyme such as HRP. Since secondary antibody is directed against the primary antibody, it leads to signal amplification. Following incubation with a secondary antibody, the membrane is again washed thoroughly to minimize non-specific binding.
after the protein has been superficially tagged with the antibody, this labeled antibody is used to identify the location of the target protein on the block.